Hi, I'm Amy. And I'm Steven. Before we get started with our video today, we like your help in reaching a thousand subscribers before next year. So please subscribe if you haven't already. We're very excited to have our guest here with us today and we'll have her introduce herself to you. Hi, my name is Deandra Denier Fields. I have a PhD in nutritional sciences and right now I work in Alzheimer's disease and lifestyle research. And my passion has been in the past in late stage cancer diagnostics, and I am a two time cancer survivor myself. And thank you so much for joining us today. All right, so why don't we jump right into our video segment? The first question is what food should I eat to increase healing for CML? In general, the thing with cancer is actually a lot of the foods that you can eat for one type of cancer will help other types as well. So this is the same thing for CML. I usually like to prioritize antioxidant rich foods. So this would be things like berries, spinach and carrots, and they usually just help to reduce inflammation overall. So that will support your general health, but then it'll also support your healing for the CML. Then you can also incorporate things like whole grains, like quinoa, brown rice, and all of these are gonna be really high in fiber. So not only do they help with your digestion and more regularity, but they also can give you more long lasting energy. And the last thing that I would suggest would be more of opting for like lean protein. So poultry or fish, and then also incorporating plant-based options. So beans and tofu. So they're going to help your gut microbiome and they're also going to help support immune functioning and then giving you that extra protein that you'll need for any repair of your cells as you're going through the healing process. And are there any foods to avoid as a CML survivor? So aside from the, the traditional avoid grapefruit, if you're on the tyrosine kinase inhibitors, the other things that you should try to avoid for CML would be processed foods. So anything that's like a sugary snack or an excessive amount of saturated fat, uh, that can promote inflammation. So one of the guidelines that I give is if you like yogurt or ice cream or something like that, then try to limit that to just like once a day. So maybe you have cheese on a taco or you have ice cream at dinner time, but rather than doing them all at each meal, just choosing that one that you want to enjoy for the day will help to keep the saturated fat lower and then reduce your inflammation. And then the other thing would also be reducing your amount of red meat consumption. So that's going to have pro-inflammatory effects. And so we know it's uh, it's not really good for heart health. And it turns out for cancer that having excessive amounts of like animal protein can also help to fuel the cancer um, or different types of cancer. So it makes your liver work harder to break down any excess. But then if you're trying to add more, you know, if you're exercising things like that, then you can switch to the plant base to get that extra supplemental protein. So the TKIs that CML patients take often have a lot of side effects, um, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, fatigue, muscle pain. What are some recommended foods to help with these common side effects? Um, and so for nausea, this one, it's, it's really dependent on how you feel about it. So my advice for that is if you're on a one time a day dosage, you can switch what time of the day that you would eat, you would take this, this medication. So if you take it in the morning and you don't feel like eating, um, what I did through some of my treatments in the past was actually do sort of intermittent fasting. So I would take my medication, say at 8am, and then I would wait for about four hours so that I could really process through my system before eating my lunch. So I would just have a later lunch at noon. Um, and so that works. That's one option. Um, but if you, you know, if you're taking it twice a day and that's a little too much to manage, like not eating around your medication, um, if you have like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, um, then you can opt for things that'll be a little bit gentler on your system, like when you're taking the medication. So there's a suggestion. Um, it's called the BRAT diet, which is bananas, rice, applesauce, and toast. And so that's a common one that it's just very easy on your digestive system. Um, you can also try ginger or peppermint tea, and that will help for nausea as well. Do you have anything kind of on fatigue? Any thoughts on fatigue? And what mm -hmm. people, because I do get questions on fatigue. 
that's a great question, Stephen. Yeah. So for fatigue, one of the things that I would suggest would be more of those complex carbohydrates. So when you think about like carbs are bad, they're not really bad. It's just we have things like sugar that are highly processed. And so they go through your bloodstream very quickly. And so you will get that sugar high and then a sugar crash afterwards. So then when we're talking about fatigue, we want long lasting carbohydrates. So that's going to be a complex carb. So things like nuts and seeds. And then also if you have like whole grain bread, so or oatmeal, for example, that's going to last longer in your system. So you're going to have less of a blood sugar spike. And then you'll have less of that fatigue. So another thing that you could opt in for fatigue could be a daily smoothie. So that's one of the big recommendations I have. Um, it would be mostly green. So you do about two cups of like spinach or kale, something like that. Then you would add a fruit like banana to sweeten it. And then you could add a tablespoon or two of flax seeds that would help to give you the omega threes. And then you add water or a plant based milk onto that. And you can always add if you have like a protein powder that you want to add to that or additional berries for antioxidants and blend. And so that will give you that long lasting energy. Are there any supplements that you would recommend for CML survivors? Supplements, you definitely want to consult with your physician before you would switch to anything specifically. And so a way to promote your innate immune system is going to be going through things like vitamin D. So you can get this naturally through sun exposure. However, depending on where you're at um, to the equator, you may be not getting enough vitamin D through just sun exposure alone. So something I recommend to almost everyone is just a low dose vitamin D supplement. You can do about 2000 units a day of the vitamin D3, and that will help to just boost you, your levels a little bit more, which will help your immune system. And then another thing that's really a simple addition, a supplement for people with CML would also be to add omega-3 fatty acids. So omega-3s are anti-inflammatory. And so you can get these through foods. So um, nuts and flax seeds are great sources of omega-3s. But if you're not able to incorporate them on a daily basis, then you could add a simple supplement like that. Um, and then one other one that would may relate to some of the uh, side effects of the TKI would be if you have muscle or joint pain, then you could incorporate um, potentially like a turmeric supplement. So turmeric is a powder, it's um, an herbal, so it's a, a root. And so that's something that you could take also as a supplement to help for muscle or joint pain. How much water should I drink every day? And so it's really dependent on the side effects that you have from the TKI. So if you do have water retention or pleural effusion, then you really want to consult, consult your physician and they'll instruct you on how much water you should be drinking. But if you don't have those side effects, then the general recommendation is closer to about 80 ounces a day. But what that translates into is actually more what your urine color is. So you want your urine to be a light yellow or straw color. So if it's a clear color, then that means that you're drinking too much water and that you're overhydrated. But on the other side of that, if it's a darker color, then that means that you're not getting enough. So that 80 is just a general recommendation, but you can go higher or lower based on what your body's actually processing. You know, you gave us a lot of good information today, DeAndre, and thank you. But what do you think is one thing someone can take away and do, start doing right now to really help with their healthy eating? The one thing that I would recommend to, you know, get you started on healthy eating would be that daily smoothie. So I recommend starting your day off with it so that you know that every day I've gotten in my green leafy vegetables, that you'll get at least one to two servings of fruit. And then you'll also get those omega threes from the flax seed. So you're starting off on the right foot. And if you don't have time later in the day to necessarily prioritize eating healthy, then you can have this to start off. And so another recommendation I would give would be if you're really busy in the morning, what you can do is load up your blender and then put that in the fridge without being blended. And then in the morning, pull it out and add the water or milk to that. 
So that's a little shortcut, but also it will last for at least one day. If you put it in an airtight container, you can usually get between one and two days. So if you're really, you know, crunched for time, then you can always make it fully ahead of time. Okay. Oh, that's great advice. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you've given us such great advice today. Um, and we're so grateful that you joined us on our channel. And um, we love if, if our followers and subscribers want to follow you, where can they find you? Yeah, yeah. I really enjoyed talking with both you, Stephen and Amy. We're longtime friends. So I'm glad to help out your community. And so where they can find me is actually this year, I started a, a new brand. It's called Cancer Free Haven. And so we're on Instagram and then we also have our, our website, cancerfreehaven.com. And so one of the things that I think would apply directly to your community is I have a, a free Thriver checklist. Mm -hmm. And so I go through in my life after cancer, what are the top things that I try to do every day to promote healing and health? That's a wonderful resource. Yes. And we'll yes. include all of your links in our, in our notes down below. If you'd like more videos on CML and healthy living, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching today. Together, Together we heal.